How are you, Lillian? I'm Pinsini. It's good to see you. Give me a hug. Do you like the documentary? Yes. Yeah? Hello. Hello. <laughs> That's a good hug. But you were just talking about the rapist, and that's why I originally got involved with you and with this orphanage, funnily enough, because I love your philosophy of breaking victim, perpetrator, victim, because that's what I see all over the world. People are victims, and then they become perpetrators. And you know that, that, that famous thing, the oppressed become the oppressors, and then they become oppressed, and then they become the oppressors. I know. It's to break that cycle. Yeah. And it was, uh, it's very nice, because, I mean, when you arrived as well, that, uh, well, firstly, I I'd never allowed anyone to do work on us. So, I mean, we'd had journalists, and but I like to keep it private. It's only after I'd done a lot of counseling with the children that they really themselves said, yeah, we want to tell our stories. And I said, you tell your story? And they said, we have to tell our story because it will be, it will be the final part of my healing as I go into the new part of my life. And, mm. and that's why um, I waited for the right person to come. Mm. And I liked your philosophy on, on work that you had done because you had done work that um, was also nobody wanted to look at. Mm -hmm. And yes. one has to be brave. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I heard, and when I really decided to do is when people phoned and said, if you continue with this uh, documentary, uh, because you know that woman made the gift, and of course I didn't know who you were and I didn't know anything about the gift. And they said, if you don't, if you go along and do it, we, we can't support you. And I realized that some, we have to make these painful decisions because it meant that you had also touched something that people don't want to hear. Yeah. But that was so courageous because didn't they pull your funding? Yeah. Yeah, they never had anything funded. to do with us again, and we wow. could have had a lot from them. Yeah, that's amazing you made that decision. So we had to make that decision. We've often made that decision. Often, uh, most our decisions are the short-term loss mm -hmm. is a long-term gain in integrity or material things. Mm -hmm. But I never realized that there was, would we'd have such a reaction because when I did the, the, I mean, we've done this work and people would visit or something, and they'll give us something and they'll leave, but they can't really touch it. But I think it's also the, there's a new humanity in that's touching people that mm -hmm. we need to bring out and talk about it. Mm -hmm. We need to clean our closets that our parents um, so busily hid. And I know you were surprised, and I was too, because when I first approached you, I said, well, I just want to shoot this little documentary, and it'll just, I'll just be here three or four days. And then you were surprised when I showed up the next year. Yes, because the <laughs> first year I appeased you. <laughs> And the children. <laughs> and the, the second year, the I was not that eager. No. And um, <laughs> especially, um, it takes a lot to talk about what you do mm -hmm. because uh, all my work has always been done in action and not in ver ver not to verbalize it. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, to verbalize and look at my action was also a threshold for me because it's easier not to verbalize. But it it also then allowed other growth. Mm -hmm. So you're happy yes, but you did irritate me. Yeah, I know. Because you yeah. are, you've got that knack of going to the spot where we need. Hmm. I, um, I mean, who else has followed me around with my cadavers? No one wants to help me. You're the only person, and with a camera. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's just these things that people don't see. Yeah. Um, how we bury our dead and loved our dead. Yeah. And loved our lives. Um, and worked with our angels, you were the only person that dared to go there. And you were courageous to let me keep filming, because I know it was hard. Yes. I, I don't think I could have done that. Yes, it was very it difficult. Was very difficult, I know. What I liked about you as well, that you were so careful about integrity. We asked everybody, do you want to? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Fine, leave it. Mm -hmm. And that everything was done, and you sent me everything and said, this is what I've done, what do you think? And even you had to harass me because I was so busy. You, you just, your side was always there and on a good level. The thing that happened that we didn't expect is that people started contacting us and saying, how can we help you? And we were so surprised moment. because people have been helping us over the years. But we've always kept it low key because we felt it was our life. Mm -hmm. I wasn't in a business. I wasn't a social worker working on a project. Mm -hmm. This isn't a project. And actually it's not an orphanage. It is a large extended home. Uh -huh. And um, so that's why we never really went down that road. But now, how it's helped us is that we've managed to get computers mm -hmm. and we're upgrading still more. We've got our little 15 computers that we spread across our 300 
That's more fantastic. school and of Does course that's growing they were donated so and we saw the promo and to people that have been seeing the promo mm -hmm. and because we're turning 18 we're old 18 yeah we're 18 we've yeah. been here for 18 years now we're going into our 18th a year time. it's a long time mm. it's a lifetime yeah no this is a lifetime. a lifetime i've lived a lifetime and now we're going into the next lifetime which is quite exciting but really you know for it's helped us more with food the money comes in and we can buy food. People say, buy food. And we say, oh, thank you. Because most people, as Khan will tell you, some people want something they can see. Yeah. I'm only building this for you because I can see it. Now, Marion, if you had your own well, could you then be growing your own food? Is that the problem? It's not enough water? No, we do have our own well, which we, in this country, call boreholes. boreholes. We do have our own water, but not enough for, um, for that amount. You see, vegetable. when we first moved on here, we decided, we thought we'd, uh, our kids would, I don't know, we used to be in that van that we drive around and we could all go down to the coast together. Now everybody's bigger and the children are bigger and they've got more children and more children have come and suddenly we have a caravan to go mm. out. A ca so it's, it's very difficult for us to, to go out. But definitely we are looking for a property that we can just grow food. Yeah. We need to just grow food. Yeah. And it's not even complicated food. We know now for when you eat and you're poor, you, you go for things like green pepper, garlic, things that you can make spice and yeah. soya yeah. And, and odd meat. And of course the maize, which is the staple. I mean, I never used to talk like this. Food was the last thing in my mind. I've become so good at being poor. Mm. Aquaculture, we've started. Uh -huh. The aquaculture is very nice because um, I could, uh, we can go there and grow the fish and we grow tilapia and yeah. that's very rich yeah. so all my kids know now when we rush down there they say can i have a fish can i have a fish and it's taken up our protein mm -hmm. and we've got some animals now and we've got uh, wild pigs that we can slaughter when we really broke mm -hmm. and we haven't got enough money mm -hmm. and then we just uh, 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 slaughter for the pot um we really like hunters and gatherers again but of course it's wrong you know getting back to the social activist part why should people be living like this? It's not right. In such a rich country. In such a rich world. Yeah, such a rich world. And I think it's not just us. It's people all over the world that have to say, whoa, on this uh, world trade and everything. Guys, mm -hmm. this is how majority of us are living. And this is what I tell people that come and visit. They go, oh, my goodness. And you I say, but did you know that you are the exception, not us? The majority of the people in the world are living like this. It doesn't look like it because our yeah. cities look so well organized. So but go and look at the billions of the people that are, whose kids aren't in school, that don't have internet. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, is our biggest divide. And you don't have to do anything with a child. Just touch them, love them, feed them. Don't hurt them. And that something is triggered in them and they can do their lives. Mm -hmm.